During the medieval period, the Germans were a diverse collection of tribes and kingdoms that played a central role in shaping the cultural and political landscape of Europe. Tribes such as the Saxons, Franks, Bavarians, and Swabians were foundational to the region that would later become modern Germany. The city of interest for this video, Hanover, was heavily influenced by the Saxons, one of the most prominent tribes in the region. The city's name itself derives from Onavir, meaning high bank, referencing its strategic position on the Lane River. Although Hanover emerged as a major urban center later in the medieval period, its roots lie in Saxon settlements, which provided the foundation for its growth as a trade hub and center of governance. Medieval German architecture varied by region, but was deeply influenced by Romanesque and later Gothic styles. Early Saxon buildings were often wooden and utilitarian, reflecting the needs of agrarian communities. Over time, as wealth increased, more durable stone structures such as castles, cathedrals, and town halls began to appear. Hanover itself saw the construction of several prominent structures, including churches and fortifications, which served as symbols of both religious devotion and political power. German pottery in this era was largely functional, with unglazed earthenware being the norm for everyday use. However, glazed ceramics and elaborately decorated vessels became more common in the High Middle Ages, especially in urban centers like Hanover. Clothing styles of medieval Germans were practical, yet displayed regional variations and social distinctions. Wool and linen were common fabrics, with wealthier individuals adorning themselves in brightly dyed garments and occasionally incorporating silk and fur. Saxon warriors and nobles wore tunics with belts, cloaks fastened by brooches, and distinctive leather shoes. Weaponry reflected the martial traditions of Germanic tribes. The Saxons were known for their sexes, single-edged blades used in both combat and daily tasks, alongside swords, spears, and shields. With the growing influence of feudalism, knights in the region began to adopt chainmail, helmets, and more sophisticated weaponry, echoing broader European trends. Hanover's strategic location and its Saxon heritage positioned it as a key player in the political and cultural evolution of medieval Germany. For this video, I gathered seven genomes of medieval inhabitants of Hanover dating to 8th century AD. I cherry-picked the samples, excluding those with a Scandinavian genetic profile, and only including those samples with a genetic profile that resembles modern Germans. The most common Y lineage among the seven samples was R1BL51, which two samples carried. Three samples were female. Regarding their phenotypes, two samples scored a corded phenotype. There were samples scoring Norid, Mediterranean, North Atlantic, Alpinid, and Dinarid phenotypes as well. Here is a morph of their average phenotype. Two samples were predicted to have blue eyes, one samples was predicted to have blue eyes with an amber center ring, and four samples were predicted to have hazel eye color. Three samples had dark brown, three samples had light brown, and one sample had dark blonde hair. No samples were predicted to have black, light blonde, or red hair colors. The most common skin color among them was olive, which three people had, followed by white and palest, which two people had each. Two people had wavy, two people had curly, two people had straight hair, and one person had kinky hair texture. Six out of seven samples were predicted to have a Greek nose shape, but there was one sample with a snub nose shape prediction. The samples as a whole had a very strong predisposition to male pattern baldness and were taller than average. The medieval Germans had a low predisposition to kidney stones, high predisposition to hemoglobin E disease, and low predisposition to migraine. Two samples had high odds of lupus, two samples had low odds of gout, and one sample had high odds of eczema. Three samples had low odds of polycystic ovary syndrome, two samples had low odds of age-related cataracts, and three samples had low odds of age-related macular degeneration. Two samples had high odds of epilepsy, one sample had high odds of asthma, and two samples had high odds of vitiligo. Three samples had high odds of myopia, three samples had low odds of corneal astigmatism, and one sample had low odds of primary biliary cirrhosis. Regarding their dopaminergic profile, the early Germans were strongly predisposed to the warrior profile, characterized by slow dopamine reuptake, high dopamine levels, and poor stress tolerance. 
The early Germans were predisposed to fewer D2 receptor sites, which leads to lower odds of such mental health conditions as schizophrenia and bipolar and a propensity for no-go learning. The early Germans had low odds of Tourette's, low odds of ADHD, low odds of depression, and low odds of bipolar 1. It seems that as a whole, the early Germans were a very mentally healthy people. One sample had high odds, and one sample had low odds of autism, with the rest having an intermediate predisposition to autism. Five out of seven samples were predicted to be lactase persistent. Two out of seven samples were predicted to have a higher level of empathy based on their OXDR genotypes, with the rest having an intermediate level of empathy. Regarding athleticism, their distribution of the athletic or allele in ACTN3's R577X was comparable to the European average, suggesting that the early Germans were about as athletic as the Europeans are. The early Germans were predisposed to higher odds of epithelial cancers, with four samples scoring high odds of epithelial cancers and three samples scoring lower odds. They had average predisposition to breast cancer, high predisposition to glioma, low predisposition to thyroid cancer, and high predisposition to testicular cancer based on KITLG genotypes. Moving on to blood cancers, the early Germans had low rates of polycythemia vera based on JAKE, two genotypes, and average rates of leukemia. Two samples had low odds of allergies, and five out of seven samples carried risk variants for rare diseases, most common of which was Parkinson's disease, which three people carried risk variants for. The early Germans were also strongly predisposed to autoimmune disease on the basis of HLA genotypes. Five samples had high odds of type 1 diabetes, two samples had high odds of rheumatoid arthritis, and four samples had high odds of multiple sclerosis and carried HLA DRB1 risk variants for MS. The early Germans were predisposed to intermediate homocysteine levels, with six samples scoring intermediate and one sample scoring lower homocysteine levels. Two samples had low odds of ischemic stroke, two samples had low odds of atrial fibrillation, one samples had low odds of deep vein thrombosis, and one sample had very high odds of a wide range of cardiovascular issues ranging from blood clots to myocardial infarction. Every samples was predisposed to average odds of obesity. For samples had high odds of type 2 diabetes, and four samples had low odds of Alzheimer's. The early Germans had a predisposition to alcohol dependence and a protection from syncope. The early Germans had elevated vitamin D levels, which is good, and also elevated LDL cholesterol, which is bad for cardiovascular health. The early Germans had lower red blood cell count, shorter telomeres, which leads to shorter biological lifespan, and mostly normal iron levels. None of the seven samples were predicted to have hemochromatosis, but two samples did have low iron levels approaching anemia. Moving on to blood types, three samples were predicted to have blood type O, one sample was predicted to have blood type A, two samples were predicted to have blood type B, and one sample was predicted to have blood type AB. Thank you for watching until the end. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and share. Links to purchase the raw DNA files analyzed in this video will be in the description along with all other useful links.